Hi guys, welcome back to Handmade, I'm Chelsea. Today we are going to talk about corsages, fun. So whether you are headed to the prom or dressing up for a special occasion, a corsage is like a rite of passage. But these days, luckily, corsages don't have to just be red roses and baby's breath on your wrist. As a former florist and HGTV.com weddings editor, I thought it would be really fun to show you three unexpected ways to make a corsage. Let's go. Okay, so this first project might seem a little weird, but it's actually a throwback. People used to wear corsages around their neck to ward off evil spirits at special occasions. So today, I'm gonna show you how to make a necklace corsage. So for this project, I'm gonna use a bar necklace. I ordered this online for $5, but you could probably find it at the craft store. If you've ever worn a corsage, you've likely seen one of these. They're just your basic elastic corsage wristband. They're about 10 cents at the craft store or online, and you can buy them in a big bag for two bucks. We are going to cut the elastic off, and we're gonna use the metal part of it so that we have a larger surface area to work with for our flowers. So this is where the bar necklace comes in handy. You just take the metal part of the corsage bracelet and place it on the bar, and then usually these will have these bendable arms that you can then bend behind to secure it in place. And then if you want a little extra security, just use some pliers or jewelry pliers to clamp it in place. And this will hold the surface area on so you won't have to worry about your flowers falling off at all. You can dance your heart out. Another reason that this is great is you can clamp this on, you're not gluing it on or wiring it on, and then we will just arrange the flowers on this plate. So then later on, if you wanna reuse the necklace, you just take it off and toss it away. All right, so that was the hard part, seriously. Um, arranging a corsage is super easy and you should not feel stressed out about it because all you need is floral adhesive, which is basically super glue, and your favorite flowers. That's it. Go online and look up some beautiful examples, then when you are arranging your flowers, you have something to base it off of. It's almost like cheating on homework. And it's super easy. Don't want people to cheat on their homework. Don't cheat on your homework. There we go. PSA, don't cheat on your homework. All right, we're gonna start with greenery. Um, greenery makes a great base for the other flowers in the arrangement. This is called Italian Ruscus. You can sometimes find it in the grocery store, but if you can't, any greenery will work. So usually what I like to do is cut all of my flowers first and then arrange them without gluing them so I have a general idea of what the arrangement's gonna look like. So we've got our greenery base, and next what I like to do is put the statement blooms in. I am using anemones because they are a decently sturdy bloom that you can find most of the year. And they're just a little bit more trendy than roses, and they've got this beautiful center that makes them pop in your arrangement. I feel like Martha Stewart. Okay, so sometimes when you're working with anemones, you can tell that the collar of fluff has grown about half an inch below the bloom. So I'll, I'm going to cut the bloom off and then cut the fluff off separately so we can use them both. All right, so another tip, you're gonna wanna cut all of your blooms as close to the petals as possible, but not so close that the petals start to fall off. And you're gonna wanna cut them flat so that when we glue them, they'll stick right to your surface. But for right now, we're still just play arranging. We're not gluing anything yet. So find a place on your necklace that you love. So the next flower that I'm gonna use is called a helleborus, and they bloom in the winter, which is usually when they're in season, but you can order them from your florist year round. I love this flower because it's delicate, but it's sturdy, so it's gonna hold up out of water, but look beautiful and add softness to your arrangement. And I think I'm gonna place this one down here, see how that looks. And from there, I'm gonna use some accent flowers. So some of my favorite accent flowers are what's called wax flower. Now this is a woody stem, and they're these beautiful little delicate white blooms that have berries on them, so they just add a little pop of something extra. I'm going to place them in the back of the arrangement. And then I'm also gonna bring in what's called a strantia, which I had to look up how to pronounce yesterday. Because here in East Tennessee, we call it astracia, which is not the correct term. But astrantia is actually a classic British bloom. You'll find it in a lot of British gardens, um, including the Royal British Garden. It's also a really great 
in smaller arrangements like this because they're beautiful, small architectural blooms. This is kind of looking like a hot mess right now, but we're gonna glue it in place and it's gonna be good to go. If you've never heard of floral adhesive, it's very common in the floral industry and it's used for boutonnieres and smaller things like corsages. Stuff is intense, um, as you can see by the fact that I can't get the lid off. This glue is better than super glue because it sticks to wet surfaces like a flower stem and it dries in about 20 seconds. It takes days for the glue to come off your fingers. So just be very careful when handling this glue. Could that glue my hand to that table? It could glue your hand to the table. Okay, so now that we have the basic bones of what we want our corsage to look like, I'm gonna take everything off and I'm gonna glue it down. As with any good super glue, you're gonna wanna let it dry for about 10 to 15 seconds to let it get tacky before you start arranging on it. I'm gonna put just like a thin layer right here on the base, just in case the glue that's on the stem doesn't hold as well. Another tip for when you're working with floral adhesive is always have something protecting your surface from the glue, because this is not gonna come off of whatever surface you're working on. I'm just using a piece of square felt. And also that gives you a place to sit your piece while you're working. All right, so start with greenery, because that's always your base and put a little bit of glue on the stem. The rest of this project is just like watching glue dry. So once I've glued everything down, I'm just gonna assess it to see if it needs anything else, which I think it needs like one more bloom. And then it's done. And you can either wear it immediately, or you can put it in the fridge for up to 24 hours and wear it the next day. When people would wear flowers around their neck, they usually wouldn't wear them on a chain. They would pin them to their bodice, either here, or they would do kind of like we do a modern boutonniere and pin it over here. But as fashion modernized and necklines went lower and dresses became sleeveless, people started wearing their flowers on their wrist and that's where the modern wrist corsage came from. So this look, if you think about it, is both classic and fresh. But I still have two more to show you. So for our next unexpected corsage, we're gonna put a ring on it. Truth be told, I had never made a ring corsage until yesterday, and they are quickly becoming my favorite thing in the entire world because look how cute this is. It's super easy. You're gonna follow almost all the exact same steps as the necklace corsage, but with smaller flowers, and it takes about five minutes to make one of these. So this would be a really great project to do with your girlfriends the night before prom or the day before your wedding. So for this project, you're going to use these adjustable ring bases. They have a flat top, and you can buy them in a pack of 15 for about 10 bucks at the craft store or online. We're going to put a little bit of glue on the base. Ooh, wow, that came out fast. Hazards of the job. So good tip, I'm glad this happened because um, as you're working with floral adhesive, the if you let the glue sit too long, the pressure starts to build up inside the tube. Um, and then when you go back to use it again, it just like, it bursts out everywhere. So um, one tip, as soon as that happens, don't touch it. Just leave it alone and um, clean it up with a paper towel or whatever you have nearby, like a piece of felt like I do. Because if you touch it, your fingers are gonna have glue on them for the next five years. All right. Oh. No! It's on me. I'm gonna use thistle for this project. You can literally use any bloom that is sturdy and small. For my other rings that I made, I used small spray roses and anemones like we use for our necklace project. So let's put a little glue on the end of the thistle. And again, I'm gonna arrange this one a little asymmetrically just cause I like the way that that looks. So I'm gonna put this off to the side here. All right, so let's do another thistle. And again, for this project, I'm gonna use wax flower like we did for the last one. So there are a few flowers that I would recommend not using for this project. Those would include hydrangeas, lilies, or anything that doesn't do great out of water. The glue combined with the air and whatever temperature you're in is going to make the flowers wilt a lot faster than they would when they're in an arrangement. And that is literally it. Our third project is this trendy upper arm cuff. I'm gonna be using a lot of the same flowers that I used in the first project, but this time I'm adding in feathers for interest. 
All right, so similar to the necklace project, we're gonna start with a basic piece of jewelry. I found this online, again, for $5. And we are going to use the base from a basic corsage elastic. So I'm gonna put the corsage base on the bottom part of the cuff. So now that this is good and sturdy, we're going to put a base of corsage glue, just like we did with our necklace project. So now that we're all flower pros, you don't necessarily need to think your project out for this one, and it's a little bit difficult to do that since this doesn't lay flat. So I'm gonna start with some feathers, and I'm going to glue them on asymmetrically. So if you wanna copy this look, I'm gonna put my feathers off to the side like this. That way they'll trail down the arm when you're wearing it. So when you are arranging a cuff corsage like this, think about where it's going to lay on your arm because you don't want to accidentally arrange the entire thing backwards. For the statement flower on this cuff, I am using pink ranunculus, which is a beautiful alternative to roses. And to finish things off, a little sprig of a stilby. And just like that, we've got this edgy, cool update on a classic. Guys, I really enjoyed showing you some new ways to make a corsage, and I hope that I've inspired you to think outside the corsage box. Which style was your favorite? Drop a comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.